many of you know, civilization established itself near the basic necessities of life, food and water. Human life would be able to expand their possibilities with certain things such as taming horses, the railroad, and highways. Arguably, the most expansive movement for human life is the railroad. The railroad allowed things like fuel, water, food, and many other necessities to be delivered to locations that were once unlivable without some sort of delivery system. The railroad is responsible for establishing several towns down the line, with Texarkana being one of those towns. So this brings us into today's topic, the Texarkana Union Station. The Texarkana Union Station was built and operated by the Union Station Trust, which was a joint organization between the Missouri Pacific, Texas and Pacific, the Cotton Belt, and the Kansas City Southern Railroads. The trust was founded in 1927 and put together roughly $1,667,000 to build a new station for Texarkana. E. M. Tucker was the chief architect behind the Texarkana Union Station. In 1921, a fire destroyed the Union Station in Little Rock, and Tucker was given the job of designing a new one. When building the station in Texarkana, Tucker borrowed design ideas from the plans of his previous project in Little Rock.
about it. Construction on the Union Station would begin in 1928. It was completed in 1929 and opened on April 17, 1930. This building had replaced another station on the property which dated back to the late 1880s. The new Union Station would consist of a Renaissance Revival type architecture featuring three large arching windows on its facade. The building consisted of roughly 67,000 square feet. There were also plans for a restaurant, but due to the Great Depression, this part of the Union Station was never put in. The construction company behind the building was the Stuart McGeehee Construction Company out of Little Rock, Arkansas, again, following the design made by E.M. Tucker. A cornerstone celebration would take place on May 12, 1930 to honor the opening of the new Union Station. My favorite part within the architectural design of this building is that half of it stands on the Arkansas side and the other half on the Texas side. The station would serve as a prominent stop for soldiers on their way home from the Second World War, as well as that several current Texarkana residents made their way into Texarkana through this station. Many tell stories of their trips to St. Louis, New Orleans, and several other journeys beginning here. In the 1950s, President Eisenhower implemented the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. Automobile travel had been on an incline from the 20s on Ford, which would slowly but surely take away from rail travel.
Oh no. <laughs> In 1971, the last Missouri Pacific passenger train would roll through the station. After this, the main area of the station was abandoned. The baggage into the facility has been converted into Amtrak's ticket area, and the annex portion was converted into the Bi-State Correctional Facility. Amtrak opted to not use the main area of the building when they began operations in 1974 due to its large size versus their expected annual income, as well as the fact that the building doesn't have handicap access. In 2003, current owner Jeff Sanderford purchased the Union Station. Tours have been held through the building, as well as parties and a haunted house. I couldn't find any exact dates for these events, however, several locals have talked about it on the Remember in Texarkana Facebook page. There are currently no plans to revitalize the main portion of the building, however it is protected. In 1978, it was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Anyways, that'll conclude our video for this week. Feel free to add to this video within the comment section. We love learning about the history these buildings have to offer. Do us a favor and like, comment, and subscribe. Also, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a video from us. And as always, stay safe.